Let's learn in this video how to use namespace annotations to schedule pods into specific nodes or also into a specific node pool. Kubernetes supports logical and physical isolation for pods. This includes using tools like the namespaces, taints, node selectors, node affinity, node anti affinity, etc. But some customers require strict physical isolation to meet security requirements or to isolate large applications. They require creating a dedicated node pool for an application, for example, and then our application should be deployed only into that node pool. Now the question is, how can I achieve that? So we have two options here. Either I use the node selector on the deployment, targeting that node pool, and this means for all the deployments that I want to deploy to only that node pool, I need to use the node selector in each one of these deployments. The second option, which we'll explore today, which is more elegant option, is to use the annotation on the namespace level. And this means all pods deployed into that namespace will be deployed into the specified nodes or the specified node pool. Let's see now how this works. So typically a namespace could span across one or multiple node pools actually, or one or multiple nodes within my cluster as the example for the application number three. But for a specific requirement here, I want the application one to be deployed into its own node pool. I wanted to own that uh, node pool and the same for up to it will be deployed only to its own uh, node pool. So I will leverage here the namespace annotations in order to inject the node selector into the all the pods that are deployed into the namespace. In this lab, we'll create an AKS cluster with multiple node pools. Then we want all pods and deployments deployed into the namespace number one to be scheduled only on the node pool number one. And the same for application two, it will be deployed on namespace number two. So we want all of these pods and deployments to be scheduled only on the node pool number two. It means to, they will not de be deployed on node pool one or node pool number three. To achieve that, we'll be using the annotation scheduler alpha Kubernetes node selector. And then note here, we are using a label that exists on those node pools by default when we create those node pools that is the agent pool and then the name of this uh, agent pool or of this node pool. Let's see how that works. So for the lab, I have all the files and the scripts and the YAML files that I'll be using are already available on this GitHub repository. For my environment, I have already created an AKS cluster with one user or one system node pool and two user uh, node pools. On this GitHub repo, you will find all the files and all the scripts that I have used in this lab in order to create the cluster and uh, create this configuration for these uh, files. I have already created the cluster and I have created multiple node pools. So typically I would have one system node pool and two user uh, node pools that I'll be using for this uh, uh, demo. How I have done, done that, so I have used the command line here just to create uh, that uh, cluster, create a resource group, and then connect to the uh, cluster using pipctl and then add a node pool, call it, it node pool number one and node pool number two. So at this time here, if I do az aks node pool list, I will see here my three node pools for my cluster. So note here I'm using AKS cluster, but this will work also with any Kubernetes cluster. The uh, annotation that we'll be using today actually could be enabled in any Kubernetes cluster. In AKS, like in any Kubernetes cluster, when we create the nodes or the node pools, they will have some defined labels by default. So if I use here the command a, a uh, group control get nodes show labels. I will see here on the third row right here. I will see some of the labels that will be created for each node in my cluster. So you see there are lots of uh, uh, nodes actually. So what I'm gonna do here is I go just to use the uh, grep in order to grab some labels for that uses the agent pool right here. So you see here for all my uh, nodes. Each node will have a group actually of uh, uh, labels and here the ones that have agent pool. So in this demo today, we'll be using this label, agent pool, node pool number one. Note here, it's not the same for all uh, nodes. It's the same for some nodes that are part of the same node pool, okay? But for some other uh, node, 
nodes it's different because those ones uh, actually are part of another node pool so here if i do cube control get nodes you will see that our cluster contains lots of uh, uh, nodes and some of them call it node pool 1 node pool 2 and node uh, node pool 1 next in my demo i'll go to create a new namespace i'll call it ns01 and then i'll go to use and i'll go to annotate that namespace using cube control annotate i'll use the annotation scheduler alpha kubernetes node selector agent pool equal node pool number one that's the the label used in my uh, node pool one so my namespace is annotated then if i go to describe that uh, namespace i will see here that annotation was applied successfully for node pool number one after that i'll go to deploy some pods into that uh, namespace so i'll create a deployment with replica equal five and i'll deploy it into the namespace one that we have already created and then next if i get here pods with dash o wide to view where these pods will be scheduled, you will see that here all those pods will be scheduled into the node pool number one because I have deployed those uh, pods into the namespace O1 that contains that annotation for agent pool equal node pool O1. How did this work? So let's uh, take a look at the description of the pod. So I'll go here to grab the first pod of uh, this list right here using this command cube control get pods and then I get this pod and then I go to describe that pod from the namespace one and to here I will see that there is a node selector agent pool equal node pool one. So actually that annotation from the namespace were used by the admission controller in order to inject that annotation into all the pods that are deployed into that namespace. So that was the demo for deploying an application into the node pool number one. Let's now see the same thing, but with deploying a second application to the node pool number two. So I'll deploy a second, uh, Sorry for that. So here I'll de deploy a second namespace. I'll call it NSO2 and then I'll go to annotated. Uh, but here I will be using node pool 02. And then if I describe it to make sure it was annotated, yes, here it was annotated with node pool 02. Then I'll go to create another uh, deployment. I'll deploy it into the namespace 02. So then next when I go when I get deployments or when I get pods from NSO2 O wide, it will show me that here all of these pods will be de deployed into the node pool number two as uh, done by the uh, annotation. So the annotation that we have used today, you know that here it's uh, containing the word alpha. It means it's not yet uh, uh, beta or it's not yet released in Kubernetes, but in AKS it's supported at least. So you can, uh, you can explore it uh, today. And note in this demo, I have actually used the existing labels within uh, those uh, node pools. So it's technically actually possible to label specific nodes and use that uh, label to schedule pods. This is not a good practice because nodes could be replaced or recreated when cluster upgrades and then the labels will be lost. So instead create a dedicated node pool with specific label so that the label will be inherited automatically by all the nodes from the node pool.